Vespertine. 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 Vespertine is a gastronomical experience seeking to disrupt the course of the modern restaurant. Helmed by chef Jordan Kahn, it has garnered two Michelin stars and, according to the LA Times, has been both the best and the least best restaurant in Los Angeles. Tonight's menu's theme, Cuba, a family-style affair inspired by the food chefs of Whale made him growing up. To access the menu, one needs to take a turquoise piece of paper out of a cerulean envelope and put your phone up to a QR code on it. This will take you to the magical land of Cuba. So I gotta come clean here. This menu is about 42 slides long and, oh, oh wait, sorry. I meant a photo essay containing dish descriptions and the stories behind it. Vespertine. Anyway, I kind of skimmed through the photo essay and in doing so, I missed the heating instructions all the way on the last slide. I did go back and look at the menu later, but just keep that in mind as a disclaimer what you're about to experience. Vespertine. Real star. Croquetas de jamón. Papas rellanas con picadillo. Both of these things are Cuban-style croquettes. The small guys are filled with ham and cheese, and the big boys are filled with mashed potatoes stuffed with picadillo, ground beef sautéed with tomatoes and olives. If you have a problem with creamy things that are deep-fried, hey, I'm not judging. It's 2020. We're past that. Vespertine. Ensalada de aguacate. In this dish's menu card, Chef reveals he didn't have a Haas avocado until he was 15. The avocados here are the green skin kind. I acknowledge that these tomatoes and radishes are probably from a great local farm somewhere. Honestly though, apart from the watercress, I feel like I'm just eating a large avocado toast minus the toast. Vespertine. Watercress would be great on avocado toast. Mariquitas con vinagreta de mojo. Mariquitas are plantain chips and they're great. Cheesecake factory, take note. Platanos y yuca. The menu card for these platanos is completely filled with text, and the passion Chef has for these undeniably comes across. Not to name drop Alan Passard. Alain Passard. I know who he is, I'm cool. But Chef Abuela's slow frying cooking technique for these seems like something he would employ for his artichokes or rhubarb or whatever. Yuca, also known as cassava, is a starchy tuber where boba comes from. <gasps> According to the menu card, it should have a custardy texture and gel-like exterior when boiled long enough. I can't say that I agree this texture here is custard-like. More like a sweet potato that isn't completely done yet. I didn't question it during my meal though. Vespertine. Arroz blanco y frijoles negros. Vespertine. Well, we got rice and beans. These, dare I say, cinnamon kissed beans are pleasantly salty and slightly firm. The menu says that they were picked fresh from Rancho Gordo farms, and therefore they do not require soaking. Chefs will also do anything to not soak their beans these days. It's a thing. Ropa vieja y lechon asado. Vespertine. Ropa vieja is essentially slow cooked shredded beef. It has a nice undertone of fragrant spices and a little bit of fruitiness from the olives in here. But there's definitely some notes of sweetness, like how some nonos will throw a pinch of sugar into a sundae gravy. Mamma mia! The skin on this pork shoulder is luscious, and I regret not tossing it in an oven to heat up again. The shoulder itself, though, I hate to say this, is a bit dry. Not a good look for a thick piece of meat. Yo, Kyle. Come check out this gay f shit. Arroz con leche. Flan de leche. Pastelletos y queso y guayaba. Ooh. Chef takes inspiration for this flan for malted milkshakes he had growing up. This is an unexpected gut bomb, but I'm not exactly complaining about that. This rice pudding uncannily tastes like Percy Shack and brings me right back to my Latin childhood I didn't have growing up. Made with starchy short grain rice, this is more of a gut bomb than a flan. Okay, wait a minute. I'm kind of starting to get mad actually. Porto's, LA's largest Cuban bakery, is known for its regular sized guava cheese pastries like this. I imagine that they use commercial all-purpose flour and vegetable shortening in their dough. And Vesperdine's dough? It tastes exactly like a lesser version of Porto's. Porto's is obviously amazing in its own right, but think about how other certain local pastry chefs could interpret this. This pastillo, kind of like this whole meal actually, tastes like something cheap masquerading as something expensive. But on the other hand, it incorporated great ingredients and a lot of thought and care went into it. A chef reinterpretation of Cuban cooking might be missing the point of Cuban cooking. But on the other hand, this is a two Michelin star restaurant. A chef reinterpretation of yucca or black beans could be earth shattering. But on the other hand, who says this isn't a chef reinterpretation? The chef asks us to view Vespertine and its food as a work of art. And as far as a replication of an abuela cooked dinner goes, he nailed it, imperfections and all. But on the other hand, this wasn't an abuela cooked dinner. In creating an artistic pretense for which to view it, you're hiding technical weakness under a facade art. But on the other hand, aren't you still curious about what a proper meal at Best Routine would look like after dining reopens? And if you are, doesn't that mean that Chef is doing exactly what he set out to do? But on the other hand, does it?
So, what did you think? It was good. Okay then. Best fifteen. Best fifteen. Best fifteen. Best fifteen. Vesper Teen.